guys, welcome back to the channel. And as you can see, we're now on to door skins. So yeah, I've just got to get on with it now. Um, in the previous episode, if you haven't seen it, go back and check that out. Um, the doors have been fully repaired, all the frames. Um, I've had to actually repair the pillars where the glass sits. I've had to put pieces in places you probably wouldn't think I'd have to. Um, but I have actually managed to save this set of doors. So the last step is to get the, the door skin on lined up and go from there. So in order to do this, it's a lot easier to have a door skinning tool. Now, I previously mentioned I don't have one of those, so I'd be doing it with Hammer and Dolly. Um, however, Graham from the Manchester Mini Owners Club has, has lent me one. Can't thank him enough for that. It's gonna make life a lot easier. Um, it's a really old school tool, and at the end of the day, if, if you can get away with not having to do any filler work, that is the whole point of the door skinning tool. Um, so the way I did my last skins on the sidewalk, and I had a bit of guidance from doing for doing them, is fitted the frame, got the skin lined up how I wanted it. I put a little screw in where the door handle hole goes, and then I lined it up where I wanted it. Then I put some adhesive around the inside of it, stuck it on, welded the tops, took it off, folded it round. Sounds really easy to say that really quick, but that, that is how I did it. Um, I've just noticed I'm a bit color matched, um, but slowly but surely these orange doors are disappearing, which is good. Um, yeah, so. What I'll do is just show you the door now, where we're up to. If you saw the previous episode, you see we've got door frames fully painted. Um, they're all sealed up and they're ready to go. No, they're not bronze yellow, but it didn't really matter. You're never going to see it. Um, you could argue a lot of what I do when I paint bronze yellow in cavities is you're never going to see it. But I really, I haven't got any more bronze yellow until I order the rest to paint the car. And I didn't really want to, didn't really want to waste it there. So it's all painted and I've left all my cavity holes so I can inject the whole thing full of wax. So moving forward, that's how we're going. So bringing you up to the car. So this is where your door handle hole is. So that's where I'm gonna line up with a new door skin. Put a little screw through there. Um, main thing to do when you're doing any door skin is make sure you're happy with how the frame sits in the car. So I've got an equal gap all the way around. I'm really happy with the whole thing all the way around. So the next step, step is really is to get the skin placed in, see where you need to mark off. And then I always put a line at the top where I just need to clean back the metal to do the tack, tack welds. But yeah, pretty happy with that. Um, obviously when the door skin's on, I'm gonna put a sound deadening, big strip of sound deadening on the inside of it. They do sound very tinny when they've just been done. Um, but yeah, it's, this is the last step and then I can literally turn the welder off for, for a long while on this car anyway. And yeah, so it's all painted, all protected and ready to go. Right, so let's get that skin lined up. So first thing I've done, take the sticker off. You'll never leave your stickers on your panels. Um, it's just a moisture trap, you just don't need it and yeah it should, should be there so frames all lined up like i've just mentioned let's get the skin in well i'm not gonna lie that's 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 pretty good um I'm gonna get a little clamp on the back of it just so it doesn't fall as I walk off. So, really nice gap up there. I'm like, considering I lined the front end up with the original doors and skins, which I knew to be original doors from factory. It's not too shabby. Um, obviously, this will go pushes in tight once it's gone around the door. Pretty happy with that. I've got a bit of adjustment on the latch, so I might bring the latch in a bit. That seems to be sticking out a little bit, but gap wise, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm just going to mark off the line there, and then we'll go from there. I'm going to move the latch in a bit just to clear that gap. But the, it's a very nice uniform gap all the way down. It's just the door sitting a bit proud from the core panel, so.
Right, so I've cleaned up where my line is there, you can just see it there. And same up front, because it gets like a little tack or seam weld along the top of it. And that's how I'm gonna get it in place and then sort of push it with the adhesive on. So I've got the back of this all prepped up, cleaned. What I'm going to do is some transportation scratches. Um, I'm just gonna paint them because you just don't want it to rust. And on the front side of it, I've done the same. I've got both edges cleaned up then. And then yeah, it's a case of putting a bead of adhesive all the way around, tacking the top, pushing it tight, getting it back off the car and folding the lip round. So yeah, that's, that's the way I do it. And it's worked for me. Sidewalk's really nice. So yeah, let's get on with it. Alright, so my next two tools of choice is a panel beating hammer and that's the panel folder, so the door skin folder. 
in these corners I've just pinned it down a little bit more just to make sure the air's out um, make sure the sealer's starting to do its job so all we've got to do now really is tap it around as much as possible along this edge with the hammer and then we gently use that with a strip of metal maybe underneath um, just to keep the nice uniform fold all the way around so let's just get on with it Alright, so you can see all the way along, sorry the light's really bad there, so all the way along, it's bent all the way around, um, done off that corner, it started to go up there, started to go there, but you can see the whole lip's pretty much bent over before I started doing that. Um, just going to finish it off now, get it all folded around, and then we've got to weld the top edges, sort of where they meet up there, seam weld down, and then it's a case of getting it back on the car. Hopefully it's all gone well. Why is it the last ever weld I do to this car is the best weld I've ever done? That is probably some of the best welding I've done. I know a lot of you out there are going, that's awful or that's not very good, but I'm actually so proud of that. And I haven't got to grind it, I haven't even got to grind it back. It's so flush. <laughs> really happy with it. So I'll nick the top off there because that will catch on the door, the you know, corner. But why well, can that bit have been nice? Look at that! Oh well, you live and learn, getting better and better I guess. But yeah, this is one door skinned. What I'll do is I'll dress back a few things and we'll get it fitted back on the car. Right guys, so you saw me finishing off the welding on the door. How is it that I get to the last weld and do my best weld yet on this whole car? This best weld. The weld is officially switched off now. It will go back on to carry on with the 89 very soon. Um, I've got some jobs lined up on that, but door's done. And I've got a little confession to make. I've done the passenger side too. So we'll take a look at that in a second. But for now, let's have a proper look at this. I'm really happy. The line down here is perfect. Absolutely perfect. All the way around. It opens and closes. I can find the finger on that. Open and closes, absolutely fine. And it sounds very tinny, obviously, because there's nothing in it, no sound deadening, but it's, I'm really, I'm so happy with it. So it's really nice all the way along. I, yeah, I'm really happy with it. So the world is officially off, as I say, and we're on to finishing the prep. Couldn't finish anything this area because of the doors, just in case I need to make any modifications. But I know um, I've got that confession to make, so let's go look at the passion aside before we get stuck into this side. Right, so walking around the passenger side, it's done as well. So the only thing I've got to do on the passenger side is just got to bring it out a little bit there on the hinge. Um, but I've just put this back on just for safekeeping for now. But yeah, this one opens and closes really nice. The only thing I had to do on the passenger side was you see where I put these markers here. I just had to basically hit that and I've got Mark Draper to thank for that. I saw him do it on the RA. And basically, that line now, all the way down, is completely the same. And I'm so happy with it. So literally where I marked that was where it was just a bit too tight. I mean, the door was clearing it, but it was just a bit too tight. So I literally hit it with a hammer, tapped it back. And I hope you can agree that that's... So this is both doors done. Again, this one opens and closes really well. Nice gap all the way around. All the way around there. So that is it guys, world is off for this car, back on on the 89 which is covered in clubman parts, 
we're done. We're done with the welding. I know the shell was done, that's obviously why we painted the floor, but that was the last bit, and really there was not a lot of welding to do, but both doors fit really well, and I am not a professional at this. You know, I filmed this purely for, for the documentation and to sort of help you guys along. You can do it in your garage. What I've got is a little trestle. Um, you know, I mean, I've got lent the tool for for the panel folding, but you can buy that tool, um, but it was just back ordered everywhere. So I couldn't get hold of it myself, but thankfully a friend lent it to me. We got the job done. Um, obviously this is a video and it was gonna be, I don't know, 15 minutes long, I'm not too sure by the end, but I've actually managed to do both these doors in six six hours, or just over six hours. Um, obviously I had them all prepped, I repaired the bottoms and stuff like that, so we have done quite a bit of work to get to that point. But yeah, it doesn't, doesn't take long once you get going. So I hope they look good with some paint on. Um, that's the last thing I've really got prepped now and we can really look at pushing forward and getting some primer on the car. There's a few more areas I want to go over. Um, I'm going to go over the whole car with 600s, just to get any sanding scratches out. And then I'm going to put some heavy coats of primer on. Obviously flat lap back, see how we get on. I think for me I need to see it in colour, in like, all one colour, so the grey for now, just to sort of see where I'm at, because it, you can get quite lost of it all being different colours of where you're going. But yeah, that's going to be the next milestone. So what I'll probably do is prime the boot lid, see how that comes out and then move on from there. But let's look at the board because we can officially tick stuff off. We can add some hours and see how we're getting on. Right, so that brings us to an end of this episode. All the welding's done, doors are fitted, boots pretty much ready for primer. Bonnets needs a bit more work, but we're getting there. The whole thing's sort of coming together towards the primer stage now. So we can add some hours on and we can get rid of some stuff off the list. So, Door skins and door repairs can all go. Uh, hours. I've probably been out here seven hours, so we can. So, we're getting there. What have we got left to do? We've got paint subframes. One subframe is painted. The rear one is painted. So, build subframes, that's a case of, I'm gonna raid my spares, see what I've got, whatever I don't have, I'm gonna to have to try and get hold of somehow. Um, but obviously the subframe side of things isn't actually part of this budget build, so if you've seen the series from the beginning, it is literally getting the shell to a painted stage. That is the budget build. Um, yeah, so we're getting there. Um, prep car really is going to be the next thing and if you've obviously seen the previous episodes you know I'm getting closer and closer to that. Uh, there's a few areas I need to sort of address. The boot area needs to sort out a bit more. Still needs to finish the rear quarters really. Like I mentioned I had a must have been heat distortion in that driver side rear quarter um, and what I've done is heat the panel up, push it back um, but it still just required a very very light sort of skimp of dolphin glaze just to get it right. Um, Prime is going to see if I've got it good enough but Engine bay's ready for paint, boot area's ready for paint, just needs clearing out because it's all dusty again. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. We are really, really getting to the bronze yellow stage again, which is nerve wracking, but obviously exciting at the same time if it comes out nice. So we're getting there, but 215 hours and the list is getting smaller and smaller. Obviously parts to buy, I don't need any of that. And what I will do is make a new list of parts to buy. Um, when we carry on after the, the budget build side, side of things, if you like. Because uh, once it's painted, obviously it's gonna get built in my spare time when I've got the money and that sort of thing. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Um, the club is obviously coming, the big budget build of it is coming to an end, but we are still gonna continue to film it. We're gonna continue to bring you in for updates when we're putting subframes back in. Because I still want to document it and hopefully you guys still want to follow along with it but obviously once the car hits paint stage the budget side of it stops um, and hopefully we come in under budget the next thing to buy which will take the budget to a hit will be the paint so obviously I have already bought some paint to do the underside and interior so I have that figure in my head and what I'm going to do is want to get the rest of the paint that's that's the whole figure and it will go on there so we'll see if we tip it over I have a feeling we're going to tip it over but I'm remaining positive um, but yeah, so if you haven't already, like I say, hit subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, comment what you think of doors, have you done doors, what would you do it differently? This is how I do it, it's, it's worth the sidewalk and I'm really ha happy with the results. 
So like I say, all in all, it's taken about six hours to get to this point. So catch you next one, guys, and hopefully we might see some primer. Stay safe.